One more example using the central limit theorem. A test has been given in a particular course for 30 years. The test scores have a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 11. All I know about the distribution of test scores is an average, 75, and I'm gonna assume that's a percentage, but it doesn't say, and the standard deviation would also be 11 percentage points uh, in, in the same unit. Find the probability that a class of 52 total students had a mean score less than 60, more than 90, between 80 and 90. Well, I'm hoping to use the central limit theorem, which would say the distribution of sample means is normally distributed. And the mean of all of the sample means would be 75, and then the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means would be the old standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. But we need to make sure that we're actually allowed to use the central limit theorem here. And good news, we are. When the sample size is larger than 30, the central limit theorem applies. So even though I don't know anything about the original population's distribution, whether it's bell-shaped, uniform, or just some other distribution, I am allowed to use the central limit theorem because my sample size is over 30. All right, here in part A, I'm looking for the probability that I get a class whose mean score is unfortunately less than 60. All right, well, I'm dealing with a less than. So I'm gonna imagine that I shade over that way forever and ever, so a minus 10 to the 99th, comma 60, comma the mean, comma the standard deviation. Type that into our TI-84 and see what happens. The calculator tells me zero. I'm gonna write a little plus to it because I know it's not actually a zero because I see some things shaded, but apparently this event is so unusual based on this information that the calculator rounds it to zero. It's almost, almost impossible. Well, what's really going on here is that the variation in this distribution is very small. With a fairly significantly sized standard um, sample size here, 11 divided by the square root of 52 has a standard deviation of 1.53, making 60 very far away from the mean. In fact, if we calculated a z-score, it would be almost minus 10. That's almost 10 standard deviations below the mean. It's a very rare thing to get a sample from on this test of a class that scores less than 60. Unfortunately, this is a, a fictitious scenario that I just made up for the problem, so don't read anything into that. Part B, more than 90. All right, so again, dealing with the same situation with the same sample size, so the central limit theorem does still apply. The distribution of all the sample means will be a normal distribution. The mean of all the sample means, mu sub x bar, will be 75. The standard deviation will be 11 divided by the square root of the sample size, still 52, and now this time a more than 90. We'll be using normal CDF again. 90 as a left-hand endpoint, 10 to the 99th as a right-hand endpoint, pretending that I'm shading forever, the mean, and a standard deviation. And this time I get 4.12 times 10 to the minus 23rd. The calculator can calculate this one. It's not rounding it to zero, but, well, to any amount of reasonable rounding, that's still a zero plus. Sad, this is a sad part of the problem. Getting a class whose average is an A, it's not the same as getting the, pro uh, uh, the probability of a student getting an A, but the whole class, an average of an A or better, would be very, very rare. In fact, almost impossible. So, on average, a whole class won't get a failing grade, but on average, sadly, on this test, it seems like a whole class earning an A is also very rare. 
but that is also a very rare event. I want to test whose average is a 75. And then part C, the probability of scoring between an 80 and a 90. Same ideas apply, still using the central limit theorem, still have the same sample size. So I can still use the same ideas. Between 80 and 90, this is not to scale. This region would be much further that way, but this will let me type everything into the calculator appropriately. So I'm shading from 80 to 90 the mean and a standard deviation. So let's see what the probability of earning a B is, scoring between an 80 and a 90. Or excuse me, having a class average between an 80 and 90, a class average of a B. And that's also a very rare event. On this fake made up test that does not exist and has not really been given at any college for 30 years. Well, there's just one more example of using the central limit theorem. And the reason I really wanted to do it is because I got to use the central limit theorem this time because of the sample size being 52, which is larger than 30. And that's it for now.